The weather ramps up with some sideswiping solar storms and a lot of activity on the east limb. Those stories and more are in the spotlight. Space weather this week is really picking up in activity. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we had been watching this cluster of regions as they rotate to the west limb, especially region 3539, which has been firing some f a few low M-class flares, but it really hasn't been giving us any big solar storms or all that much to talk about, so we're not expecting all that much from it. As we take a look at the east limb, though, it's a totally different story. Look at all these active regions in Earth view. And if we take a look at the south, you can see this filament right here and some region in here, watch it closely, you'll see it erupt in kind of a dual solar storm launch. Whoosh! Right there, did you see that? Now it actually gave us this massive uh, partial halo. We can even see a shock wave that came out. And this solar storm is actually going mainly southeast of Earth, but it does look like it's going to clip Earth just a smidge, probably around today, the 13th through the 14th, maybe a little bit later, but likely not going to give us all that much. Now, as this region uh, continues to, to rotate into view, or these regions continue to rotate into view, we also have a lot of other solar storms being launched off of the east limb, as well as a few big uh, M-class flares, but nothing to really write home about yet. We're keeping our eyes on it. Meanwhile, take a look at this filament here as it begins to rotate further into view. On the 11th, this region launches, as well as another solar storm, you'll see it right here, whoosh, and bang, right there. So you had a whoosh, bang, kind of one, two part uh, solar storm launch. In fact, as we take a look at it in coronagraphs, you can see the whoosh and the bang right there. Once again, this kind of two part solar storm launch is giving us something that is not gonna hit Earth, but it's gonna graze Earth just a little bit. So we might see a little bit of unsettled conditions or possibly disturbed conditions around the 16th or so, mainly at high latitudes. It's not going to be that big of a solar storm thing. Meanwhile, on top of that, we have a small coronal hole. You'll see it here in a minute. There you go. There's that little coronal hole. This little coronal hole might give us some fast solar wind eh, in about four or five days, well, maybe five days or so. Again, something very minor, probably only at high latitudes. And so we're, we're just going to be dealing with that. But what we're really watching is all of this activity on the east limb. We have this big region here that's rotating into Earth view and a couple other regions from the sun's far side. In fact, as we take a look at our JSOC helioseismology far sighted viewer, you can see some of these old regions that rotated off of the west limb back at the end of the year. Hmm end of the year. Do you remember the big solar flares we had at the end of the year? Yeah. These are the regions that have been going on the sun's far side. You can see them here in gold and you can see the dark regions, especially region 3530, 3533, and one of the new regions, 3535. They are all surviving their far side passage once again, and it looks like they're going to be rotating back into Earth view here over the next maybe three or four days. So we could see that solar flux. It's going to dip down just a little bit for a few days, but as these regions rotate back into view, it's going to rise up again, as well as the risk for uh, big solar flares and possibly uh, chances for bigger solar storm launches that could be Earth-directed. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of a new moon on our way to a first quarter, and by the 19th, the moon will be about 64, maybe 65% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, well, you're going to have this bright companion, and it's getting brighter every day. So be sure to check your local rise and set times. Now, switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that solar storm that's going to be going mainly southeast of Earth, but it could give us a grazing passage. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 30% chance of a minor storm uh, around the 14th, but it should settle down pretty quickly. In fact, it should stay unsettled until about the 16th or 17th when we're expecting the fast wind from that coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone. Again, we're only expecting active conditions with about, about a 15% chance of minor storm conditions, but again, it's not going to last all that long, and it may not even hit us at all. So it looks like we're kind of dodging bullets here a little bit. Uh, Aurora photographers, you could get a little bit of a show, but only if you're dedicated should you chase. 
Now at mid latitudes, well, things look pretty calm right now. We are gonna be on a storm watch looking to see if that solar storm ends up grazing us and giving us any of a disturbance. But right now, we're, uh, NOAA's expecting unsettled conditions with about a 20% chance of active conditions over the 13th and 14th. And then again, we're gonna settle down quite a bit, but we might get a, a wind watch you know, it's hard to tell whether or not that fast solar wind from that small coronal hole is going to give us anything down at mid latitudes. We're going to expect unsettled conditions, but maybe about a 15% chance of active conditions. So only if you're super dedicated should you chase. Otherwise, you need to keep your eyes on that east limb because maybe more solar storms are coming. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of active regions in Earth view with even more rotating into view over the next three or four days. That's keeping that solar flux up. We're sitting in the 180s right now. It may even ramp up to the 190s as we move in through mid next week. It's kind of hard to tell. We're sitting definitely at the moderate noise level. NOAA is giving us about a 45% chance of M-class flares at the R1 to R2 level over the next few days, and even a small 5% uh, uh, chance for X-class flares at the R3 level radio blackout over the next three days. We'll see, I'm gonna stretch that out a bit and say that we might rise up to about a 10% chance for R3 level radio blackouts as we move in through next week as those new regions rotate into Earth view. But the solar flux is gonna stay pretty much the same. We also are gonna maintain essentially the same uh, risk for those R1 to R2 level radio blackouts. So it's, although it's not a super busy time, we do need to stay, still stay vigilant because we do have a bit of noise on the dayside radio bands. And you GPS users, you definitely need to stay vigilant near dawn and near dusk. And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Everything is in the green this week. We are sitting at the D1 normal range, and this is for you aviators at flight level 360. It's also the S0 level for everyone else. This is the quiet range. We're only looking at about a 5% chance of a radiation storm whisk at the S1 to S2 level over the next few days. And I'm gonna stretch this out over the entire five days because I just don't see any active regions that look like they're gonna be big contenders for radiation storms. So you aviators and flight crew and you high risk passengers, it looks like you're all in the green this week, and it looks like that might continue even through next week. So the space weather this week is definitely picking up in activity. We do have a couple sideswiping solar storms, and that could give us a little bit of a disturbance. So roar photographers, if you're at high latitudes, well, you might get a bit of a roar enhancement. It's really hard to say. So only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now, roar photographers at mid-latitudes, well, this probably isn't all that exciting. We may not see anything at all. So it might be better to sit this one out and keep your eyes on the east limb of the sun because all that activity is soon gonna be rotating to center disk. And when it does, it could launch some Earth-directed solar storms. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, this week's kind of a moderate week for you. We do have some uh, big flare players on the Earth-facing disk, but they're not firing really big M-class flares or at an R2 or R3 level radio blackout. We're not seeing flares at that level, but we are getting a bit of moderate noise on the bands because there are so many active regions in Earthview with even more uh, planning to rotate into Earthview in a couple days. So just kind of deal with that this week. You should expect a bit of noise, but not too bad and uh, definitely some radio blackouts, but it shouldn't be uh, long lasting. So in, enjoy the, the breaks in between and just hang in there because things will get better. Now, GPS users, well, you know, we're having to deal with a little bit of a disruption on Earth's night side over the next couple days, but it may not be all that bad. And again, the noise on the bands with the radio blackouts isn't all that bad. So if you are, as long as you're paying attention to dawn and dusk and you're staying vigilant, your GPS reception should be pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.